एहसास न्याय का सबके लिए आकाश न्याय का सबके लिए I welcome you all for another episode of Goa State Legal Services Authority virtual judicial series. I Ms. Quincy De Silva, Civil Judge Junior Division and Judicial Magistrate First Class am honored and privileged to introduce you all our guest speaker for today. She is Shivati Reena Fernandez, who is Secretary District Legal Services Authority, North Goa, who will be enlightening us on the topic inventory proceedings. A very warm welcome to you, madam. Unlike the rest of India, Goa has inherited and adopted its inventory, succession and family laws from the Portuguese, making it one of the unique laws in the country. Let us now learn more on this topic. I now request our speaker, Shivati Reena Fernandez, to take over and shed light on today's topic. Hello viewers, I will speak on inventory proceedings. I shall broadly cover the procedure for conducting the inventory proceedings in court. What is inventory proceedings? Inventory proceedings means a proceedings to partition the inheritance of a deceased or to obtain a formal order of allotment of the inheritance by the court. The place of opening of inheritance is determined as follows. Firstly, if the estate labor had permanent residence in the state of Goa, then succession opens at the place of his permanent residence. Second, if the estate labor had no permanent residence in the state of Goa, but had immovable properties in the state of Goa at various places, then the succession opens at the place where major part of the properties are situated. Such major part of the properties are calculated on the basis of the value of the properties. Thirdly, if the estate labor had immovable properties in the state of Goa as well as outside Goa, then succession opens in Goa where the immovable properties are situated irrespective of the value. Fourthly, if the estate labor had no permanent residence in the state of Goa, nor immovable properties in the state of Goa, but had movable properties in the state of Goa, then succession opens at the place where these movable properties are situated. And lastly, if the estate labor had no permanent residence in the state of Goa, no immovable properties in the state of Goa, then succession opens at the place where he died in the state of Goa. Now for filing of inventory proceedings, a petition is required to be filed in the court of law, accompanied by the death certificate of the estate labor. In case the death of the estate labor is not registered, then one can produce the burial certificate or adduce admissible evidence, for instance, affidavits as provided under the Indian Evidence Act. The court, upon producing the admissible evidence, will pass an order justifying the death of the estate labor for the purpose of inventory proceedings only. Now who is an interested party in the inventory proceedings? Inventory, interested party means a heir, moiety holder of the deceased, the executor in the will where there are minors, then absent heirs or legatees, and the persons who have the right to use the of a part of the inheritance and also the executor. At the time of filing of their petition in inventory proceedings, the cost title has to be given. Now the cost title in the initial petition shall consist of the name and address of the petitioner and the name and permanent residence of the estate labor. Thereafter, the uh, head of the family shall give a cost title specifying 
the names, addresses of all the interested parties and any other parties who are headed in the inventory proceedings. During the pendency of the inventory proceedings, if additional statement is given and if any party is added or if there is death of any interested party, then the amended cost title shall be given time to time as the case may be by the head of the family. As far as the head of the family is concerned, it is for the court to appoint the head of the family based on the petition which is filed by the petitioner. The head of the family shall take oath that he shall discharge his duties faithfully and diligently and give a declaration on oath stating the name and the status of the estate liver, the place where he died and the date of death, the name of the interested parties, their addresses, their age, the capacity, testamentary or legal. All these details shall be mentioned in the declaration on oath. Now if any of the parties have renounced their rights to the inheritance, like uh, for example any interested party has executed a deed of renunciation or relinquishment, then that also will be mentioned in the declaration on oath. If the estate liver had executed a will or a gift, the details of that will or gift have to be mentioned in the declaration on oath. The date of the document, uh, the place where it was registered, the book number, the page number and the number of registration. All such details have to be mentioned in the declaration on oath. And the head of the family is also required to produce the document in court. If the estate liver had married under separation of assets and if there was any anti-nuptial agreement executed, then that agreement will also have to be mentioned. In case there are minors in the inventory proceedings who are subject to orphan's jurisdiction, then a family council is required to be constituted. The names of such family council members is required to be given in the declaration on oath. The family council shall consist of three members, one from the maternal side, the other from the paternal side and the third member can be from either side. The function of the head of family cannot be performed through a constituted attorney except in two circumstances. Firstly, if there is no interested party resident in the country or secondly, if all the interested parties consent to such appointment. In terms of section 387, the court shall order that the first summon or notice shall be served on all interested parties and the legatees or creditors as the case may be. The first notice is mandatory because if no notice is issued then the inventory proceedings can be declared as none and void and any of the parties can file such application at any stage of the proceedings. From the declaration on oath, if it is evident that there are unknown legatees and creditors, then they have to be served through substituted service by pasting the notice at a conspicuous place in the courthouse. Now section 384 enumerates the grounds for removal of the head of the family. There are seven grounds enumerated therein. Section 385 provides for discharge of the head of family from holding the office. There are four grounds mentioned therein. One, if the head of the family is more than 70 years of age. Second, if the head of the family is unable 
to perform his duties due to ill health. Thirdly, when he resides outside the jurisdiction of the court. And fourth, when the functions as head of the family are incompatible with the post that he is holding. Proceeding in absentia. The inventory proceedings shall proceed in the absence of the interested parties who, despite having received the first summon or notice, does not appear before the court. Such parties are not entitled to any further notice in the inventory proceedings. However, those interested parties who are resident within the jurisdiction of the court are entitled to receive the notice of licitation. Initial list of assets. The head of the family is required to file the initial list of assets. The assets shall be listed item-wise, starting with debts due to the estate, securities, actionable claims, money, foreign coins, objects of gold, silver and precious metals and such other objects and thereafter all the remaining movables and livestock immovables including mortgages, easements, leases and other encumbrances thereon and lastly debts due by the estate. Now say for instance with respect to the bank accounts, fixed deposits or if there have been saving accounts then the account number has to be mentioned, the amount and also uh, it is required to be mentioned the interest accrued thereon. With respect to immovable properties, the inscription number, description number, survey number, matrix number, the boundaries, the location and all such details are required to be mentioned in the list of assets. The improvements can also be mentioned uh, which have been done by the party. Uh, suppose say there is a locker uh, which was in the name of the estate liver and uh, the uh, head of the family interested parties are not aware of the contents of the locker. Uh, then that uh, locker can be listed in the inventory proceedings and then uh, an application has to be moved to the court for opening of the locker. Then the court will pass uh, an order uh, to open the locker in the presence of the bank manager and the parties uh, and the various. And, it's, uh, and thereafter, the bailiff will file uh, the uh, conductor inventory upon opening of the locker and will mention uh, what were the items in the locker and will be produced in the court. Then the court will have to uh, go ahead with the other formalities uh, as far as valuation is concerned. Then, with respect to the valuation, uh, the head of the family uh, has to file an application for valuing the properties uh, listed in the initial list of assets. Uh, many a times uh, it so happens that uh, the head of the family and all interested parties are represented by one advocate uh, in an uncontested inventory proceedings and the parties do not object for the valuation. If the court finds that the valuation given in the list of assets is proper, that is it is proper uh, as on the date of opening of inheritance, then uh, the discretion is with the court to dispense with the valuation of the assets. If for instance, uh, there is a valuer required to be appointed and the uh, court uh, will appoint a valuer and uh, the fees also of the valuer will be determined uh, by the court and a certain time will be given to the valuer to uh, uh, file the valuation report. With respect to different items, say suppose gold items are to be uh, valued then that will have to be done by an expert that is a goldsmith or uh, with respect to some other property. So different uh, ex uh, different persons can be appointed as valuers depending on the assets that are listed in the initial list of assets. With respect to uh, the persons under disability, say uh, minors who are subject to often jurisdiction, it is for the family council uh, to convene a meeting and they will decide if the minor interested parties shall be in auction and accordingly the application will be filed. What is licitation in inventory proceedings? Licitation is a family auction in which the heirs and the moiety holder of the estate liver or of the deceased heirs are entitled to participate. The donor or the legatee can also participate in the family auction upon the orders of the court. What is to be remembered is that licitation is not a sale but a mere partition of the assets.
of inheritance of the deceased person. After the dissertation is conducted, the scheme of partition is required to be filed. In the scheme of partition, the head of the family has to only mention what is the share of the parties in the inventory proceedings. Suppose there is a widow and two children. So in the scheme of partition, it would have to be mentioned that the widow of the estate liver is entitled to half of the assets of the inheritance and the two children who are the heirs of the estate liver are entitled to one fourth each of the assets of the inheritance. After the court passes the order on the scheme of partition, the chart of partition is required to be drawn by the clerk of the court within 10 days. In case there is no auction held in the inventory proceedings and the partition of the assets of the inheritance is required to be done as per the shares of the parties, then only one chart is required to be drawn. I have just prepared a sample chart for better understanding. This is a sample chart of allotment drawn by me for better understanding. In this case, assets consist of two items, one and two valued at rupees one lakh. The deceased A and his wife B both expired, leaving behind the following children as their sole and universal heirs, namely C married to D and E married to F. The value of the assets therefore stand divided into two equal parts, each of them being entitled to rupees 50,000. The husband of C, namely D, thereafter died and on his death the share of C is to be divided into two equal parts. One part belongs to C, which is of rupees 25,000 and the other part, which is the share of the deceased D, is to be divided into two equal parts between his two heirs namely G married to H and I is unmarried, each of them being entitled to rupees 12,500. Then the shares of each one has to be given in the chart. Like for instance here, see C 25,000, G married to H 12,500, I 12,500, E married to F rupees 50,000. So total is rupees 1 lakh. Thereafter, the allotment is required to be shown. To C, her share is of rupees 25,000, allotted to her one fourth of item number one for rupees 12,500, one fourth of item number two for rupees 12,500. So total is rupees 25,000. That's her share satisfied. Now, the, uh, the next persons are the grandchildren of the estate labor. G married to H and the next one is I. Their share is 12,500. So G married to H, their share is of rupees 12,500 allotted to them one eighth of item number one for rupees 6,250, one eighth of item number two for rupees 6,250. So total is rupees 12,500 Does their share is satisfied. Likewise, with respect to interested party I, he shares also rupees 12,500. An interested party E married to F, who is the child of the estate livers, their share is of rupees 50,000 allotted to them, half of item number one for rupees 25,000, half of item number two for rupees 25,000, total rupees 50,000, thus their share is satisfied. So in this way, the chart of allotment is to be drawn where there is no auction. Now let us see how a chart of allotment is to be drawn where there is an auction in the inventory proceedings. If there is an auction in the inventory proceedings, two charts are required to be drawn. One is the preliminary chart and the other is the final chart. Two charts are required to be drawn because in auction, when one of the parties bids the properties and takes them in auction, he is required to pay overtime money to the interested parties. 
So therefore, two charts are required to be drawn. I will show a sample chart of allotment in the case where auction is held, which is the preliminary chart. This is a sample preliminary chart of allotment of the assets left behind by the deceased A and B who hail from X, wherein C has been appointed as head of the family. In this inventory proceedings, there are two assets, item numbers 1 and 2, valued at rupees 1 lakh. A family auction was conducted and the excess of auction is rupees 3 lakhs, so the total is rupees 4 lakhs. Then here, the allotment is shown. The deceased A and his wife B both died leaving behind the following children as their sole and universal heirs, namely C married to D, E married to F. The value of the assets therefore stand divided into two equal parts, each of them being entitled to rupees 2 lakhs. Then we show the shares of each of them. Thus the shares of each one, C married to D, rupees 2 lakhs, E married to F, rupees 2 lakhs. So total is rupees 4 lakhs. Thus taking into consideration the shares of the parties, the result of auction, the scheme of partition and the order passed thereon, the following allotment is made. Now the allotment. To C married to D, their share is of rupees 2 lakhs. Now C married to to D have taken in auction both the properties, say for instance. So allotted to them, item number 1 taken in auction for rupees 3 lakhs and item number 2 taken in auction for rupees 1 lakh. So total is rupees 4 lakhs. Their share in the inheritance is rupees 2 lakhs. So since the total is 4 lakhs, the excess which is with them is rupees 2 lakhs. So they are required to pay overtime money to E married to F. That is rupees 2 lakhs. So what remains is rupees 2 lakhs, thus their share is satisfied. Then to E a married to F, their share is of rupees 2 lakhs. They receive overtime money from C married to D, rupees 2 lakhs. So thus their share is satisfied. So in this manner, the preliminary chart of allotment is drawn. After the preliminary chart of partition is drawn, the court shall notify the unsuccessful bidders and those who did not take part in the recitation who are to be paid over the monies by the successful bidders to demand within 10 days the payment of the over the money if they so desire. So on the preliminary chart, the court shall ask the parties to comply with the relevant provision of section 438 of the Inventory Proceedings Act. What is the amount of stamp duty payable in the inventory proceedings? In the inventory proceedings, the stamp duty payable is 1% of the net value of the inheritance. Each of the interested party is required to pay stamp duty in proportion to their share in the inheritance. Suppose that one of the interested party does not pay the stamp duty, then the other interested party can pay the stamp duty and then recover the stamp duty which is payable in the same inventory proceedings with an interest of 10% per annum. It is only after the stamp duty is paid that the court shall confirm the chart of partition and pass an order confirming the chart of partition and the decree shall be drawn by the court. I thank Goa State Legal Services Authority for giving me this opportunity to speak on inventory proceedings. On behalf of the Goa State Legal Services Authority, I express my sincere gratitude to Srimati Greena Fernandez for sharing with us the important provisions of the law of inventory in Goa and helping us better understand its procedures and salient features. I am convinced that all our viewers have been enriched with this important topic and it will assist them in dealing with their personal matters too. Thank you viewers and don't forget to tune in to our next edition next week same time and kindly do like, subscribe and share to this channel. Thank you once again.
राष्ट्रीय न्यायिक सेवा प्राधिकरण न्यायालय कारवाई खाती बड़ वकील मिलन दिता वे योग्य कायदा खाल की मदद सलो दिता लोक अदालत द्वारा चढ़ काल केसीक बेगिन सोपयता सामे मोफत राष्ट्रीय न्यायिक सेवा प्राधिकरण बेज बो न्याय बेज बो समाज अधिक महत्ति खाती लगता न्यायालय न्यायिक सेवा प्राधिकरण कार्यालय संपर्क करा वो टोल फ्री नंबर एक पांच एक शून्य शून्य फोन करा